Hello and welcome back to Like Maria. Today we're going to look at another topic in English language. Um, that's going to be child language acquisition. Again, we're going to focus on spoken language acquisition and we're going to look at another theory, um, the behaviourist theory. For this, we're going to concentrate on a linguist called Skinner, who was working in the 20th century. So Skinner is one of the things that you will need to learn um, for the exam and need to learn about how to apply his theories um, if you're given a transcript. So that's what we're going to look at today. So first of all then, Skinner is a behaviourist um, and this is a way of looking at learning that comes from the 19th century. At um, the end of the 19th century there was um, an academic called Thorndike and he is really the person that um, really consolidated these ideas. Um, Skinner um, applies this um, in the 20th century and he applies it to language acquisition um, in his um, paper Verbal Behaviour in 1957. The main thrust of this is that children learn by imitation and that when they imitate things they are um, congratulated and um, they are given either positive or negative reinforcement um, so the parent congratulates um, or um, suggests corrections. So this is a process known as operant conditioning um, where a child says something and then the consequences determine their future behaviour. So if they are positively rewarded they continue um, that behaviour. If they are negatively um, rewarded it, or their behaviour is not reinforced, they stop that behaviour. So this is the main idea um, behind um, Skinner's theory. Um, this theory certainly works um, when we are talking about learning lexemes, new labelling of um, people or things, um, and um, we can see that it applies here. Um, also phonological developments, there is um, substantial evidence to suggest um, that children um, learn phonemes and how to say things and intonation from copying people around them. Although sometimes what they hear and what they produce um, are um, kind of mis mismatched in some ways. Um, we also know that um, children can be made to follow habits, for example, being polite, asking please, or um, learning that when one waves and smiles and says hello, they are to respond. Um, so there is quite a, a body of support for Skinner's theory. Um, and I think in particular this works um, with signs, smiles, um, facial language from very early on, um, like playing games of peepo um, or winking. There are, however, some um, challenges to Skinner's theory. For example, some people say that corrections actually don't work and children persist in their errors. Um, if you think about things like um, learning to say, James and me went to the theatre, um, parents often used to correct that, but still a lot of people will say it. There is also some evidence to suggest that parents tend to correct the content of language and not the actual form of the language itself. So they are much keener, for example, if the child looks out the window, points at a tree and says red, to say no, tree green, um, rather than um, discuss the actual building blocks of the language with the child. Um, some critics also suggest that because children understand and produce linguistic structures that they have not seen or heard before, um, this is evidence against Skinner's theory. Um, and children do say things that adults would not ever say, um, called virtuous errors um, by um, Chomsky. We'll come to that um, on a later slide. But things like I goad instead of the um, irregular past tense I went. So there are some challenges to Skinner but I think in general most people would accept that part of Skinner's theory um, does explain part of the way that children learn language. 
OK, so in the exam, we need to apply a theory to a transcript. So I've got the transcript here for us to work with. Holly, milk. Mum, milk, please. Holly, milk, please. Mum, hands milk to child. Here you are. Holly, all drinked. Mum, good girl. Holly, good girl. So we're going to think about this transcript in the light of a language question, an A-level language question. Children learn language by imitating the adult language used around them. Discuss. So here again is our transcript as well. And we're going to look at um, this um, lexeme here, please, and how we could use that in our answer. So here's something along the lines of what we could write. We can see from the transcription that Holly is learning by imitation. Mum repeats Holly's utterance and adds please. When Holly asks again and includes please, she is rewarded by being given milk. This type of exchange is often used to encourage polite communication in children and can be used to support the theory that children learn by positive reinforcement and repetition. Skinner, 1957. And this is almost exactly like one of um, Skinner's um, experiments in that the child receives the milk. This is positive reinforcement um, and they are likely to continue this behaviour. I also want to look at this past tense um, verb drinked here, which is an irregular um, verb. Um, but as you can see, it's been given the regular um, inflection ED. So we could write something um, a little along these lines. However, it can also be seen that Holly makes the virtuous error drinked, adding a regular past tense inflection to an irregular verb, Chomsky. Some say that this goes against Skinner's theory of imitation because Holly overextends the rule to create a word that she would not have heard an adult say. However, she does correctly imitate the pattern and adds the bound morpheme ed to copy the habit of past tense formation. It is interesting to note that Mum does not correct this error, but instead congratulates Holly for announcing that she has finished. This shows a weak point in Skinner's theory of operant conditioning, in that adults are more inclined to reward content rather than correct grammar. So that this um, operant conditioning we're saying here doesn't work um, necessarily for language teaching. OK, the last thing that we could pick up with in this question is this use of good girl at the end of this short transcript. At the end of the transcript, Holly repeats the noun phrase good girl. This could be used as evidence that children learn by imitation. It is certainly true that in face to face conversations, children often repeat phrases, especially in this case where the mother is likely to put phonological stress on the utterance, a feature of child directed speech. However, some other research suggests that children only imitate language that is directly addressed to them, not simply the language used around them. So there you can see three paragraphs um, that will help you to apply this theory. So thank you for listening and hopefully um, you've got to a point where you can understand um, language acquisition and Skinner's theory just like Maria.